Right. Okay, so uh, so today I think I mentioned before we were going to have a, a visitor from uh, Tyco Electronics, and uh, Sean Kelly is a Penn College graduate from 1998. Um, he, he was uh, in our two-year communications fiber optic program and uh, started working at Tyco Electronics in Harrisburg and uh, uh, been very supportive of the program, and he's come today to kind of tell you more about fiber optics, and also this afternoon in lab, we have some hands-on um, work we want to uh, do with you. We'd like to demonstrate the crimp -on connector, which is, Tyco has a version of, of a quick field installable crimp -on connector that you can compare that with your epoxy polish connector that we've already done. So, all right, I'll turn it over to Sean. Okay. As Jeff mentioned, uh, Sean Kelly from Tyco Electronics, I'm next tech here for Pennsylvania. Um, we are the world's largest manufacturer of copper and fiber optic cable assemblies. Um, we also do a lot of other things. Uh, we have an automotive division. We have a telecom outside plant division, which uh, telecom outside plant does all the long haul. We have a uh, let's see, uh, we have something called our CIS, which covers uh, your industrial communication, uh, consumer electronics, and uh, things like that. OEMs. Um, there's. Uh, under sea fiber optic cable uh, division that basically goes out and dredges the ocean and, then, and lays fiber optic cable down. Um, it's it's loosely said that anything that plugs into a wall is very likely that there's a type of electronics product in there. Likewise, with any car you would drive, it's uh, it's virtually impossible to have one that doesn't have a type of electronics product in. Um, but anyway, um, the group that I'm with is called Amp Net Connect. Uh, we focus more on the indoor cabling, the, uh, the copper, copper cabling, fiber cabling, more for data centers, office environments, and things like that. And we tie into the telecom outside plant group. Uh, you know, sometimes we're running building to building, um, like from here to the, uh, the ACC or something like that. That might be a short enough run that, that our group can handle that. Uh, we don't install anything, we're only a manufacturer, uh, and we do provide a lot of support and training and uh, things like that for our customers. Um, I'm going to go over a part of a, a long training that I have here. We don't have nearly enough time to cover everything in it, but I'm going to cover the uh, theory part of the fiber. Um, maybe at another time uh, later, later in your uh, schooling, I come up and do some of the other, other sections for you. But uh, let's get started with fiber optics. Um, again, we're going to do the theory part of it. People often ask, it, ask questions, you know, uh, you know, why would I want fiber? What's wrong with my copper? Well, I mean, I've got copper. It's fast enough. Why in the world would I need any uh, need fiber optics? What it really comes down to is high bandwidth. Bandwidth, the carrying capacity of, of that, that medium, whatever it is transporting that data. Um, you know, if you're, you're looking at Yahoo or something like that, um, on, on the web, yeah, you, you don't need fiber for that. But you start downloading a lot of movies from you know, some of these websites, whatever, and their Blu-ray quality or whatever, um, that, that requires bandwidth. It's, um, I've heard, heard people say, you know, people want to drive the fiber market, say, download, download a movie, delete it, download it again, delete it, download it again. I'm not really on board with that whole idea because it will naturally come, but if you notice over the years how websites have evolved and there's more content, more motion, things like that, that's all bandwidth. Um, even things like YouTube, you know, that's become very popular, things like that where you get a lot of video content. Um, it's something that there are limitations on copper on both distance and, and, uh, and amount of data where fiber can handle more. Uh, it's low loss. Loss is, you know, it's like loss of data. It's got a low loss component compared uh, to other mediums out there. Uh, it's impervious to EMI and RFI. Uh, those are just basically interferences where from, from lights and generators and cell phones and things like that. All these points we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about. Better security, we actually won't talk much more about that, but you can't really go in and just tap into a, a piece of fiber. You, know, you hear those stories of uh, the next, uh, you hear a farmer, and the next farmer down has a windmill, and in the middle of the night you're out there, and you take your copper wire, and you dug a trench with your tractor, and you, you, you tap into his wire, and you run it down, now you're powering your farm off of his windmill, and he doesn't know any better. You can't do that with fiber. You go in and put a T-tap or something like that into a fiber, it's gonna split your signal in half, and when you split that signal in half, it, uh, it, it reduced quality on both ends, so it's immediately detected. Uh, so the government loves fiber. Uh, consumes a lot less power than the copper system. We're going to cover that. So right here, uh, we'll talk is cost considerations. 
We're talking about power consumption. On a copper system, you're looking at about 8 to 15 watts um, per, per channel. That's, uh, that's maybe not on every system, but that's a pretty good average. But on a fiber, uh, you're looking at about 2 watts, you know, through your transceiver or whatever. Now, any time that you have power consumption, that's heat generated, right? Heat, heat's generated. So you need to cool that. Um, in data center and stuff, you have a hot row aisle and a cold row aisle, so you, you have to really maintain your temperature if things start going crazy. But in order to cool things, um, you need to have a one-to-one -one, uh, wire. For every watt of consumption, it requires one watt of cooling. So we need another 8 to 15 watts power to run the cooling system to bring that temperature back up from the power consumption that raised the temperature. So again, on fiber, we're down about 2 watts. So between your power consumption and your cooling requirements, you add those together, your whole energy cost is still less than just the power consumption of copper alone. Um, then there's the transceiver size. There are many, uh, we'll talk about this a little later, but many conversation or modes that can travel across with fiber that you're kind of limited to on the copper, you know, in your twisted pair, you guys play with twisted pair, things like that. Um, so you can fit, your transceivers are smaller, it takes up less, uh, less space. A couple other things like size of transceivers, the size of your cables, your connectors, etc. Um, all those increase uh, the floor space required. So on copper connectors are larger than fiber connectors, the cable itself, you need more cables, um, bigger transceivers, and it all basically comes into a bigger data center or bigger equipment room or something like that, it takes up more floor space. People always get hung up on the cost of the, the electronics, and they often forget about this floor space issue. If, if you, if your money, you were building a small data center, and you were to say it was going to be copper, and you wanted to build it in this room, it would take up the whole room. But if I build it out of fiber, I could probably put it over in this corner and do the exact same thing. And if you're paying a couple thousand dollars a square foot for, for, uh, for floor space, that's a huge savings. You don't have to pay for all this floor space. It's basically wasted space. So um, again, reduce your data center area, which makes the copper much more expensive than, than fiber when you, when you look at the whole thing. All right, we're going to some uh, uh, 